All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego. And today I'm joined by John Horn, CEO at the Stub Group, and he is in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. How are you doing, John? Doing great, John. Great to speak with you. Absolutely. And today we're going to talk about using Google ads to generate smoking hot leads. Um, So, John, it's an interesting subject because I know a lot of people who can tell you how to use Google ads to deplete your bank account very, very quickly um, Mm. and without anything coming in the other way. So um, before we start off, like what why do people have such mixed results or why do a lot of people how do people fail with Google ads? Because, I mean, I hear that complaint all the time that it's just money. It's a money pit. Yeah, it's a great question. And there are a lot of ways to fail with Google ads. And that's why you hear that uh, that commentary so often. A lot of it comes down to business models and expectations. So many businesses, they'll go into Google ads thinking, hey, we can spend a little bit of money. We're going to make all kinds of amazing money and it's going to be perfect. And the reality is that Google is not cheap. There is a lot of competition. Everyone is fighting fiercely for that incredibly relevant traffic, which is where the whole smoke and hot uh, leads comes from. You're you're reaching people who are searching um, in, in theory for the product or service that you're selling, but you've got a lot of competition. And let's say your competitor's business model is better. They have a better conversion rate, a better sales team. Well, that means that they can more effectively spend money on Google than you can. And they can afford to pay X for a lead. And that means you have to pay X for a lead. And it doesn't work with your numbers, but it works for their numbers. So a big part of being successful with Google is thinking through your messaging, your business model, your product, making sure that that is working to be able to effectively use the leads that you drive from Google and be able to convert that profitably. Yeah. So when you say business model, what do you mean by that? Yeah. Well, one of the really neat things about Google is that it applies to so many different business models, everything from say an e-commerce company who's selling products Mm -hmm. online to a business consultant who's trying to connect with people looking for a business consultant to fill in the blank. We work with so many different types of clients. And if you're selling, let's say a $10 widget and people are going to come in and buy a $10 widget and you have no way of establishing lifetime value and getting return sales or increasing your cart value or things like that. Well, you can afford to pay incredibly little for a click to get to your website and then hope that a percentage of those people are going to buy that $10 widget. Whereas if you're competing with someone who, hey, they can use that as a lost leader to get someone to your website, but then they are going to say through email marketing or other creative sales tactics, be able to turn that customer into a much more significantly valuable customer over their lifetime, then boom, they've got a model that, that can be a really great fit for Google. So what do you say to companies, maybe that they're competing in a space where there's a, there's an 800 pound gorilla and there's a 600 pound gorilla and there's a 400 pound gorilla. And, uh, you know, the cost of all these, uh, the cost of the, of the, of the, um, of the, of the search terms are really, really high. Uh, and they keep, these companies keep driving it up. How, how do you advise somebody in that situation? How can they compete? Yeah, that's an excellent question. And that's, that's the question that we're asked constantly when businesses reach out to us and say, hey, how do, we, how do we do better? And there's a lot of things that go into that. So part of it is working very strategically with those marketplaces, whether that be Google or even you know, talking about other gorillas out there, Facebook, Instagram, Amazon, et cetera, which are also areas that we work with uh, with our clients on. And looking to be as efficient and effective with the ad spend on those uh, channels as possible. So one thing that's incredibly important is what we call conversion tracking. So you have to understand what is happening when people click through on those ads that you're spending on uh, once they get to your website, are they turning into an order or a phone call or a form submission, whatever you're measuring as success, is that happening? And most importantly, which aspects of those campaigns are driving those profitably. Because like you said, you can spend a ton of money on Google. Uh, Google's happy to spend your money. But if you're not understanding what happens when people click through your ads and seeing, oh, this type of person converts profitably or this keyword works, or hey, I'm just wasting money over here. I need to pause this campaign because looking at the data, it's not working. You know, When you work with a partner like Stub Group or another agency to evaluate those, those pieces of data, 
use that conversion tracking, close the gap on your ROI from your campaigns, then you can more effectively make decisions about how much to spend, where to spend, and how to profitably scale your business through those platforms. Yeah, no, that's a great insight. Uh, what are some of the what are some of the more interesting or creative things that you've seen? Maybe some of your clients, or you've been working with, you've worked with your clients on that have helped them to get outsized results. Yeah, you know, one thing that's always really interesting to try is, you know, there are many businesses that are selling something that solves a need. But maybe that need, um, people don't know that there's a solution to that need. So they're searching for the need, but they don't know to search for exactly the product or service the client sells. Um, and sometimes something like Facebook or YouTube is a great place to market that because it's more of a brand awareness play and you need to reach the right type of person and make them aware of, of what you sell. Mm -hmm. But then there's also sometimes really fun, creative ways to use even search engines like Google and Google advertising to meet that need. Uh, one example that comes to mind from, from a couple of years ago, we, were, we worked with a client who um, they facilitated veterans who could um, apply for and get funding to get, say, a walk-in shower or tub in nice. their house. And veterans, they didn't know this was an option. But what we could do was we could search different problems or questions that were being searched on Google by veterans that would indicate, hey, this is a veteran. And then we could say in a Google search result or ad, for example, of, of hey, you know, looking for this, um, here's, you know, here's something we can get for you. Or even we could answer the question they were looking for on the client's website and then use that attention that we'd captured to say, by the way, here's something that's a perfect fit for you because you're a veteran and you need you know, X, Y, and Z. There's all kinds of examples like that, but I, I love creative marketing campaigns where you kind of flip things in their head a little bit and, uh, and try to outsmart the competition. So if you were advising, so if there's a, if there's a company, small business, whatever, uh, listening out there, even a solopreneur, uh, how would you advise them to get started? What are the foundations that they need to lay before they before they start laying out the money? Yeah, great question. Well, you need to have uh, something that people want to sell. <laughs> so you need to have a good good product or service, whatever that is. That's important, obviously. And then, in terms of of figuring out, okay how do I get started? What should I invest? You know, there's a lot of tools and resources out there to help with that. Um, here at Stub Group, we love to help businesses with this question. So we have free conversations where someone will reach out to us and say, hey, here's my business. Either I'm doing advertising right now and it's not working or, hey, I want to get started. And we'll, we'll talk with them and say, hey, here's what the market looks like. We'll do some projections. Here's what you would need to spend starting out. Here's what you know, the average cost per click is that we're estimating based on our numbers. And then we'll talk with them through those numbers and their margins and see do the numbers make sense? You know, is there enough profit margin in what you're selling to give it a go? Or no, is, is Google not the right fit for you? Um, so that's that's a conversation we love having with businesses. Yeah, and, and let's face it, I mean, people are getting bombarded by, you know, their inboxes full of people saying, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll optimize this for you and I'll optimize that for you and I'll make you number one on all these pages and don't even bother with Google ads because I'll get you there from SEO. So, I mean, what should, pe what should people be looking out for? Because, I mean, they're getting, obviously, there's a lot of, it's very attractive to hear somebody saying, oh, I can get you on page number one and all of that and you don't have to worry about the ads, you're going to appear right below them. But what, what should people be looking out for? What, how should they be evaluating what they should do? Yeah, absolutely. It all comes down to ROI. So looking to see what do we need to invest into this? Let's take SEO as an example. Mm -hmm. um, you know, SEO is, is awesome when you can get great rankings, uh, the free, free quality traffic coming in. It's fantastic. But SEO also is not free. You have to invest a ton of time and resources yeah. into creating content and figuring out what keywords you can rank on and keeping up with Google's constantly changing algorithms, et cetera. And so it's, it's really an analysis of looking at your your market, your business, what you're selling and saying, okay, is, is there going to be better ROI in investing into SEO? And you no, know, it's going to take a long time for that to work, but hoping it works, you know, three months, six months down the road, gets us lots of free traffic, or should we be investing on the paid side of things, which we know, of course, Google is always, Google wants money. So they're always going to prioritize making money however they can. Um, and you're going to pay more for traffic, obviously, than from SEO, but you're going to have more control over that traffic and over the messaging and over where you send them on your website and over whether or not you can actually rank on a keyword, et cetera. 
Um, so there's no, you know, one size fits all answer of, Hey, yes, you should always do X or you should always do Y. Uh, but it's more of a, a framework that you need to think through of, of ROI investment versus return. And where am I going to get the best bang for my buck, both short term as well as long term. Um, and tell me, give me an example, if you can, of one of the most creative and successful uh, campaigns you ran with uh, somebody maybe who did, did something a little bit different. Yeah, that is an excellent question. Um, let's see, creative campaigns, thinking here. So one of the campaigns that comes to mind is because we've had fantastic success with it recently is for a client of ours in the, uh, the fashion space. Uh, they're called It's Juliet and they sell uh, fashion and clothing for women. And they, they came to us, it was a very unique situation because they had been using Google uh, very successfully uh, they're a somewhat relatively new business, but we're ramping up quickly, seeing great sales, great feedback. And then Google uh, suspended their Google advertising account. And what that means is Google said, hey, you guys, we think there's a problem. You can't advertise on our platform. And so they came to us because we have a lot of experience, obviously, working with Google, understanding Google's policies and so forth. And we were able to work with them to figure out those problems and get that fixed so they could literally get back online with Google and be right. able to, to advertise. But at the same time, we also, you know, while we were working on that, we said, hey, let's think through other creative ways that we can make sure that you're still driving sales. You're losing all these sales. You're not reaching through Google. What are other platforms we can try? And they tried Facebook you know, years ago or not years ago, maybe a year, a year prior. Um, they dabbled, hadn't seen good success and so paused it and focused on Google. They're going to come back to it later, essentially. And so we said, okay, let's Let's invest some money. You know, we got some buy-in from them. Let's really try Facebook and see what we can do. And we just started um, hitting up their, but their target audience using data from their website that we were able to leverage, as well as customer audience data we could be able to get from them, and um, using a lot of lifestyle imagery and kind of fun taglines and creative marketing stuff to um, get in front of their target audience. And in the first thirty days, we drove uh, like 180k in revenue. At a 13x ROAS, while we were also working on getting them back online with Google and fixing those suspension issues, which we were able to get fixed. Um, and so sometimes, you know, when we're working with clients, it's just a it's the reality of okay, they're they're trying to run a business, they need sales. We can't just pigeonhole and say, hey, we're really mm -hmm. good at X, and this is all we're going to do. And if it works great, if it doesn't work, it doesn't you know it doesn't. We have to think with them as kind of a, a partner of their on their marketing side of things and say, okay, well. Let's look at the market as a whole. Where is your opportunity? This isn't working. Okay, let's try this and look for those. You know, look for those ways to to keep scaling them and bring and bring in those leads and, and, and orders that they need. And that's a, that's a great example. So you know, as you as you look out uh, to the horizon, uh, John, what do you see in terms of paid advertising, Google ads, and everything else? Where do you see this going, and what should people be paying attention to? And are there any new new venues or platforms coming on stream? Yeah, yeah, great question. Um, there are some some very fascinating, fun new platforms that are coming up. Uh, TikTok is one that we're looking into a lot because um, it is becoming more and more a powerhouse, both in the organic side as well as the paid side of driving traffic, especially for you know, some types of brands do amazingly well on TikTok, you know, fashion, clothing, things like that. Um, but even in the business to business space, there's been an uptick in, um, say business influencers, for lack of a better word, in driving sales and awareness through that platform. So TikTok's fascinating, um, and uh, it's something that we are we are watching closely. Uh, I would say across the board, trends that we're seeing is uh, more orientation towards privacy. That is a massive conversation right now. Of course, Apple is in some ways uh, taking the lead there with enforcing things on the privacy side that have impacted Facebook and Google and other platforms. Um, you see Google kind of going back and forth about, okay, are cookies going to die? Are they not going to die? When are they going to die? Uh, so there's, there's a lot that's up in the air in terms of privacy and really targeting abilities and what that's going to look like in the future for advertisers. So that's something that we are monitoring closely and, and looking at. And then also, I'd say lastly, uh, you're going to see continued automation 
in how the platforms, Google, Facebook, Amazon, so forth, and how they serve ads to you and how they operate with advertisers. And we see already much less, um, say, button clicking in accounts where Google's automating many aspects of things that used to be done manually. But at the same time, the downside to that is a lot of businesses are thinking, oh, let's just trust the system. Let's just trust Google to you know, let this automation kick in. And automation is only as good as the data you give it. So yeah. if you are feeding bad information or you just don't know what your strategy should be, then again, going back to it's really easy to waste money with Google because Google's happy to spend it in an automated fashion. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that that's, uh, that's coming back to your bottom line necessarily. Yeah, no, that, I think that's a great point about uh, automation and use of technology in general is that you need to make sure, as you said, if you're going to automate things or you're going to use automation, you better make sure you're automating something that's already finely tuned uh, as opposed because if you have a crappy process and you automate it, you just get an automated crappy process. Exactly. <laughs> you just get, you just have speed, all you're doing is speeding up the, the and 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 expanding the, the the crappiness out there um well listen there uh, john this has been fantastic all of john's information sub, uh, will be uh stub group information will be below this video but before we go please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do yeah absolutely so like you mentioned i'm the ceo here at stub group and, and really what what we do is we partner with businesses all types of different models uh, different verticals and help them to connect with customers online so google 800 pound gorilla for sure and also facebook advertising instagram advertising amazon advertising etc uh, we're in the business of connecting businesses to their customers at the right time at the right place with the right messaging to uh, to drive profitable roi and yeah. that's what gets me up there yeah, no, that's fantastic. Yeah, Instagram advertising—that's that's something that should be banned. I tell you, because um, I I feel like I feel like I every time I go on Instagram, I nearly buy things that I don't really need because it's so compelling. Like I'm the I'm a sucker for Instagram ads. I hear you. Instagram is doing very well these days, and uh, yeah. Facebook is is happy about that. Absolutely. All right. Well, listen. Thanks, John. Thank you all for watching and listening, and I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you.